Welcome. This course is going to be about preparing your library for pre-kindergarten. And I'm going to share some of my tips and tricks and tools that I've learned and acquired over the years that I have found super helpful and I'm excited to share with you. So just a little bit about me before we dive in. I have been a pre-K through grade six library media specialist. I have done that at a few different schools in a few different ways. Uh, I've taught at an international baccalaureate school, a primary school, as well as an elementary school that had grades pre-K through six. And um, one of the most fun jobs that I've ever had before becoming a library media specialist, I taught grades two through five and my passion had always been teaching older grades and I had never envisioned myself ever enjoying teaching younger students, but I'm going to talk about that in a, in a moment. In teaching grades two through five, I did that in a few different ways. One was as an you know, a self-contained classroom teacher where I had the kids with me all day long. And then um, as well as having co-teachers because I had an inclusion classroom and we would plan our lessons together and figure out how to use the paraprofessionals and how we would support the students in teaching lessons as well as small group work to best meet everybody's needs. I've also um, taught, when I've taught grade five, I had focused, I've done that a couple of different ways. Um, one time I taught just literacy, and um, which was reading and writing, reading and um, grammar. Another time I taught fifth grade, I taught math and science. And that was actually two times I taught. I taught math and science, which was a lot of fun. I've also been an adjunct professor at one of the local universities while I was attending the university, and I felt really fortunate. I did that for quite a few semesters where I taught integrating technology into literacy lessons and learned so much from doing that and putting a lot of um, practicing what I was preaching. And for a very long time, I was a responsive classroom consultant and I had received training in responsive classroom practices, loved it so much, integrated it and, and used it every day in my teaching until I became a trained consultant for them and had the opportunity to travel across the country and present to other educators around using responsive classroom practices. You're gonna probably, if you are familiar with responsive classroom uh, and or PBIS, you might notice some of the things that I'm talking about throughout the course to be very connected to both of those. I've had a number of certifications and ambassadorships, ISTE certified educator, BrainPop certified educator, Educator, Seesaw Ambassador, and Novel Effect Ambassador, 3D Bear Ambassador. Done a lot of those to really dig deep into how to use technology in different ways in the classrooms. And I absolutely only would do things like that for organizations and companies that I absolutely loved and used on a routine basis with my students. And I've been a Connecticut ASCD board member. So the ASCD Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development had a Connecticut chapter and we would plan a lot of professional development for the educators within the state. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience with teaching pre-K kids. Uh, like I was saying, my primary primary focus as an educator in the classroom was upper elementary grades. I taught a lot of grades three, grade four, and grade five, mostly grade four and five. And I had never envisioned myself of being like, oh, I so want to teach pre-K and kindergarten. It actually scared me a little. So when I got my first job as a library media specialist and 
found and was working with pre-K and kindergarten kids, I really did not know what I was in for. And I really struggled at first. I felt like I was hurting cats. I had no idea what I was doing. They were running all over the place. They were so little. They needed so much help. I was not planning enough or what I was planning was too hard for them. And I was absolutely overwhelmed. A couple of things that really helped me was that the that particular school I worked in at the time had an amazing pre-K program. And the staff that worked with the pre-K students were out of this world. They had so much knowledge and understanding of pre-K children that when the paraprofessionals were with me, they provided me a lot of support and a lot of tips. And then I had the opportunity of my, um, my mentor teacher at the time, like I was a seasoned educator at the time when I went to that district and, but because I was new to the building, they connected me with another teacher. Um, and mine happened to be one of the pre-K teachers and she was the lead pre-K teacher. So what was fantastic is that she would come in, she would observe what I was doing with pre-K and provide me with lots of feedback and ask me a lot of great questions. So one example I'll give you is that I really believe a lot in student choice in learning and carried that over to the library when I left the classroom and transitioned into the library. And when she came in and I had center set up for the pre-K kids and I was pretty hairy transitioning them from one center to the next, we had such a fantastic reflection afterwards that I learned the difference between having to have young learners rotate to every station and having giving them the choice of where they went i had this really weird preconceived notion that centers and in, in the younger grades was everybody had to go to every station and uh through that partnership that i had with the pre-k lead teacher really helped me modify my practice, helped me learn a lot more about the developmental needs of pre-K learners. And she really connected me with some developmentally appropriate tools to use with them. And we just had such a great time and encouraged like what I was trying to do with them and helping meet, use those particular teach that particular content in a way that was developmentally appropriate for them. And so you can see a couple of pictures of my students leaving the library very happy with their books and like really engaged in, in looking at books. So I feel incredibly fortunate to have had that experience to work with those people, learn so much from them and have the opportunity to shift my mindset and my thinking and my practices around what it was going to look like in the library to meet the, the needs of these amazing toddlers. And I know how hard and difficult it can be. Um, I know that feeling of intimidation of having a younger grade, especially if you come from working with older kids. And if you've never worked with pre-K learners, it can feel like a lot. And I really don't want anyone to feel like that. And so this entire course is about giving you those tools, those strategies, and those tips and tricks that I learned so that you can feel successful as well. And one last thing I just want to share with you before you move on to the next part is that I have a free download for you around um, pre-K through six in the Library Media Center, and it will be available for you at the end of the course. And what I do is I break down the developmental characteristics 
of students ages two through 12 and what that looks like in the library, what are some of their strengths and some of my recommendations of what we can teach to, to support them and that might be of interest to them and their developmental needs. So let's dig in. I'm super excited around sharing all the great things that I've learned from working with pre-K over the years.